So I've done plenty of reviews of the Unify switches and the Unify product line and the Unify controller software that makes this all work and why as an MSP we like the Unify and the vis visual it gives you inside of a client's network. But what I haven't talked about much is the edge switches and why you would want an edge switch versus the other one. Well, uh, they're a different color. But of course, that's probably the least significant difference. Before I threw my box away, we should probably do a quick comparison here. Uh, they both have 48 ports. They both have uh, two one gig, uh, one gig SFP, two 10 gig SFP, uh, RJ ser RJ45 serial console management uh, to get into command line, which I've never used on any of the Unify products because uh, I've never broke one. Uh, they've always worked, which is makes me really happy. The Intuitive Edge Max Web UI versus the Unify controller software. That's where the first major difference comes in. Now, this is not just the same hardware. There's different functionality inside of these. And why would you choose an edge switch? So I figure we'll cover that first before we come to review. The short answer is the edge switch is probably geared a little bit more to the enterprise environments where you want to be able to command line manage things and I've seen people even write some scripts where you could use Ansible or Puppet because this uh, does SSH or you can do mass management. Oh, you're going, why the command line? Well, you have the web UI, which will get you all the basic functions, but if you've worked in an enterprise environment or you're a Linux uh, enthusiast like myself, you realize the power of the command line. Even Microsoft has had to realize the power of the command line. Azure wouldn't exist without some of the things they did command line because that's the easiest way when you have large, mass amounts of things that you need to configure, you can push configurations out over SSH. That being said, that's where a lot of power is. Now, there's also a lot of power in these because they support routing. And the routing on the support you have for these, it's a layer three routing, so you can add some static routes. Now, this does not support, to my knowledge, or maybe they will in the future, but I don't think there's really enough horsepower to do this, like some of your more advanced, like OSPF type routing features, but you do have the ability to add static routes on the port. So that is a, a kind of a specific use case, but there are those use cases when you're setting things up that you may want to do that. So if you have uh, certain routes that need to follow certain rules and you want to do it at the switch level and throw a static route in to split your network in a special way, that is something you can do with this. So that being said, let's tear into it and actually look at what this, uh, take a look at this whole system here. So the unboxing, I'll do it this way so I don't have the overhead camera turned on. It's solid. It's the usual, uh, Unify makes really nice equipment. It's heavy, uh, it's got just an overall good feel to it. Uh, we are gonna pop it open and look inside though. But it comes with the same things that the other Unify switch comes with. So you got your rack ears, power cable, some screws to mount the rack ears on there, rack nuts, your quick little getting started guide. Now, because this has its own web interface, you need to log into it. It doesn't work like the Unify where you adopt it in a controller software. So you don't get that cool visualization that you get with the Unify software. But it's like I said, and even why do we even have this here right now? It's because this has a client uh, destination that has specific use cases that fit this. Uh, it also has um, we don't manage the client with the Unify. It's going into an integrated network where they actually need um, a couple specialized things. Unfortunately, I can't take it to the client site because it's uh, more fun NDA stuff and the, the nature of the business they work in doesn't allow me to show you the on-site setup for it and everything else, but uh, it is going in because it has a special use case and will be mated with some other equipment uh, and have just some VLANs and all that fun stuff set up. Now this does have all the other, the usual support that you're gonna find on a managed switch that you find on the other Unify lines of uh, managing the VLANs and everything else, but you're all gonna do everything and we'll get into this, the web interface on this and we'll show you the basics of the web interface. So let's pop this open though, I'm curious what it looks like inside, because I have not opened one of these up though, uh, because I haven't reviewed them before. We've deployed, but not reviewed. Uh, so we're, you know, gonna, we're gonna take a look inside. Now I will note that uh, it does, on the back here, we got your power. Uh, it still has, what, how many volts is that? It is a 25 volt DC power. Uh, so you can do that for, I believe, redundancy, or if you're plugging into a rack that has that type of power setup. Um, and it's got your console that, like I said, I've never tested the console on these. I uh, never had one break to the point of doing this. Uh, firmware updates have actually all gone really smooth, which makes me really, really happy. 
And then the front, the usual, like I said, it's uh, physically very similar to the Unify line. Um, the ones I've done plenty of reviews were four in the front. So that being said, let's take a look inside. So the switch comes apart like the other one, Unify Zoo, just a couple screws in there holding it. Uh, interesting side note, this has a little bit of a dowel pin that goes in here. And a couple, what I'm assuming are these pads, feel like thermal pads, so I guess they help dissipate the heat from the uh, heat sinks on here. That would be my assumption. The system uh, vents out the back, so you have two small fans. And like the other Unify switches that I've reviewed, they are modular, which I really like that. That way if you have to replace a fan because these are not always put in the environments that I would prefer them to be put into. And undoubtedly all of us have seen a dusty switch or seen dust as the cause of death of a switch. Um, I, I fortunately, good news, I have not had any of the Unify ones uh, dead in the field yet, but at least they do uh, make them modular here. And because it vents uh, in through the side, out through the back, uh, pretty straightforward here. So you got your two large heat sinks, a couple smaller ones for the processing on here. Now, side note is I like the way the power supply itself is also modular. So uh, there's four screws holding the power supply module in and you can simply just pop off the connectors and swap it out. So if you ever had to service this in the field, you don't need to bring your soldering gun with you. Uh, that's a certain advantage uh, when you've had to do replacements and slide it out and, uh, you know, the, the hell that is that. <laughs> so that is a uh, uh, certainly a pain in the butt, but this is fairly straightforward. I mean, not as nice as a modular power supply, but uh, that, it, that it's externally exposed. But for uh, the price and the compactness of the switch, this fits in really well. Other than that, it's the same clean design we've seen from Unify before. Uh, just, I like their layout. They don't have a bunch of clutter. They don't have a bunch of, oh yeah, we soldered this. And if you've ever seen some of the random uh, inexpensive things you can find occasionally on Amazon, you'll find where they jump or, or rig something. That is not this. This is a professional product, so it is professionally made and everything's nice. Uh, they even got the proper, I don't know what the glue is called, but it's the keep it there glue, I call it, uh, that you put like between components to make sure that they don't vibrate or shake. All the other ones are surface mount, so that's not really an issue, but with like capacitors um, you don't want them just wobbling around here or being able to you know some guy with a screwdriver poking at them and making them wiggle not really an issue here uh, they got the goop on there all right so as fun as this is I just want to give you a peek inside like I said it's the same design we've seen before from them which is great uh, it definitely works well and uh, let's get into the software because that's where the real fun begins with this so when you first set up the edge switch it's going to get an IP address of 192.168.1.2 if there is no DHCP server. I plugged it into a network that does have a DHCP server. So this is the uh, IP address that it was assigned based on the DHCP. So if there's none, you will get 192.168.1.2. If there is a DHCP server, it will hand out an address for this. Default login is UBNT, UBNT. And you may have noticed too, this is the Edge Max login. There's a little box that says new UI. So we're gonna talk about that real quick. I'm not going to go over every single detail in here. Now, this switch has a ton of features, and maybe in a later time, if I have time, I will go through and dig into it. I'm going to redirect you, though, to Willie Howe, who's done a lot of dig-ins to this switch. Uh, it is, like I said, very powerful compared to the Unify. Unify is a uh, the standard white box Unify ones I reviewed before that use the Unify controller are nice. They have most of the functions that you need in a small business environment, but that being said, when you want a powerhouse, you need something like this. So you can get in and start doing a lot more fine grain detail, not to mention the command line as well. So here we have our like port summary, dashboard, VLAN setup, uh, link aggregation, port mirroring. I've already updated the firmware to be the latest firmware, which is 1.74. So there's a lot you can do inside of this. I'm not gonna get into the VLANs. Like I said, Willie's done some good videos that'll get you started on some of that. Uh, it does have at least nice the little uh, link ports, uh, what they're negotiated at up here at the top. So you can kind of you know look at it, see what's plugged in, dig into what's plugged in on each port, uh, see the IP address. You can click on a single port and edit it, and you can see all the options you get for that single port. So unicast storm recovery, enable, disable, uh, percentages, 
there's, like I said, a lot of little things you can do for each port. And of course, it expands even more from the command line. And you can go, when you go to download this, they have an entire detailed document that shows you all the command line features uh, that you can do for this. So like I said, it's a lot more extensive. Now, I'm not covering today either because it goes out of the scope of this, uh, but it does have support for the UNMS, so the Ubiquiti Network Management System. Now, this is popular more in the enterprise WISP market where you're remote doing this. This is a similar but different product than the Unify controller software that we use to manage from an MSP standpoint. So I guess that these are a little bit different because it supports the UNMS versus the Unify. It is the same company, but like I said, two very different lines of software and tools that they have because they have slightly different use cases. Going back over to the way the menus are, things like that, there are so many little details that you can configure from this menu. So each one of them, like I said, the whole list, and I'm not going to break down every little detail in here, uh, but it does support, like here we got Mac-based VLANs, uh, VLAN wizard status port configurations, uh, private VLAN, set up separate voice VLAN. Uh, like I said, there's, there's so many different little switching things that you can do in here. Uh, setting up port security per interface, static Mac, dynamic pack, protected ports, uh, spanning tree. These are sometimes where you worry someone's going to change something out on a port or swap a device. You can lock things down in there. And of course, then we have the routing menus. Uh, so we can see the summary uh, ARP table here. Really not much in here right now. We don't have much plugged into this. Uh, interface summary, interface configuration, and statistics based on IP. Like I said, it's a little bit more involved and a lot more flexible than the standard Unify one. But it's like I said, the idea is for more advanced features and things like that. Uh, security supports uh, radius, name, server, account configuration. Uh, here and right here, port access control, statistics. So you can dig in some of those details. And we have a QoS menu. So you can set up QoS, summary configuration, and other little details for class of service. And you're doing this on a uh, per port basis. So that's, you know, like I said, some real details. So you're going to set up that it, or go beyond what your normal use case is, uh, like for maybe an average user, especially for home users. Not that this can't be used in your home. Matter of fact, they are not not a bad switch for home because, one, you don't have to run any special controller software because it has the web interface. Two, if you ever want to start playing with and you're like me and want to dig into stuff, they don't make a bad switch at all to have at the home because you have so many advanced things at your fingertips. So if you want to play around and dig in, of things, all the features are here. Now let's take a look at the new UI. I think this is kind of slick because it has the more common that we're used to uh, interface from the Unify. I, it's pretty, it's white, it's got the sliding menus, uh, but that being said, you may notice that there's not a lot going on in here. So let's look at the individual port. We can see the link status. We can disable the port, isolate the port, turn on DHCP snooping, enable flow control, but you can see how it's a lot more basic. So it gives you the nice interface here. It can tell you like the throughput and data going across the network. I just have one device plugged in, plug my laptop in just to have something plugged in. Gives you some basic settings here. Turn on SSH server. Uh, please leave Telnet off unless you have some really crazy use case for it. Uh, as you know, Telnet passes credentials in the clear, so not ideal. So there's not a lot here. I left it at DHCP for now until it gets deployed at the client. Uh, it does have the ability to ping things on there. So you can see the ping times from the switch to that. So kind of novel. I like the way they did this. Look at the Mac table again. We can ping this. We can see the uh, TTLs and the stats from here. So pretty cool. Um, I like the new UI, but like I said, it's a lot. I, I've now covered the new UI and it, it, it pretty quickly versus the old UI. Well, obviously, there's just so much more. I do like each, well, one click if I want to force it down to a different link status and things like that. And you get these you know, charts to kind of see that the data going across and such. So like I said, this is not going to be in-depth on this, but I just want to do a comparison and a quick review of the switch. It's definitely a solid performer. It's a great switch. Um, it has, like I said, a different use case than your standard Unify Edge. You don't get the cool integration with the Unify software, but it does have its own interface. 
database so you can dig into it or SSH into it and really start messing around with all the fun features it can do and create your own static routing or do those custom configurations when you have that uh, you know different use case that's a little bit more advanced than you may than you don't find with this Android Unify switch. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and click the thumbs up. Leave us some feedback below to let us know any details, what you like and didn't like as well, because we love hearing the feedback. Or if you just want to say thanks, leave a comment. If you want to be notified of new videos as they come out, go ahead and hit the subscribe and the bell icon. That lets YouTube know that you're interested in notifications. Hopefully they send them, <laughs> as we've learned with YouTube. Anyways, if you want to contract us for consulting services, you go ahead and hit lawrencesystems.com and you can reach out to us for all the projects that we can do and help you. We work with a lot of uh, small businesses, IT companies, even some large companies, and you can farm different work out to us or just hire us as a consultant to help design your network. Also, if you want to help the channel in other ways, we have a Patreon. We have affiliate links. You'll find them in the description. You'll also find recommendations to other affiliate links and things you can sign up for on lawrencesystems.com. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.